All right, so I've been getting a lot of these um, custom built keyboards now, having some problems. And usually what I find is um, they end up breaking because people install the switches wrong. Like they put them crooked and then they just force them and shove them in. So let me show you what happened with this one. Um, the customer actually brought it somewhere else and then the other place ended up making the problem worse. Um, so let me open this up and show you what's going on. So I took all the screws out already. Um, I'm just gonna pop this out. You can use like a suction cup or whatever to get this bottom cover piece off. Um, so what happened was first thing this cable they completely destroyed it so I had to melt off or first I had to sand off some of this the plastic and then I had to solder these individual pins together that was kind of a pain getting all six pins but I soldered each one and then I used a voltmeter to check each pin from this end to the end over here uh, basically these cables come out like this so it has this little sliding latch mechanism that holds it and basically I checked each one of these pins individually um, using the ohm ohms reading to see the resistance and make sure that none of the pins were shorted to each other so all the pins were uh, separated and they did um, have zero resistance from this side to the other end of the cable all right, that's very important because if you cross these pins together, you're probably going to destroy something. All right, that might be what killed some of the switches on here. Um, they had multiple switches that failed, so their delete keys broke in, their Windows keys broke in, um, and I think their F4 key um, is also broken. And the way you can test this, you also you do need a voltmeter, same thing. Uh, and I just set it to the ohm setting. Okay, uh, I'm not an electrician, so, so I don't know exactly what th each thing means, but I believe this higher number means it's more sensitive. I don't know. Um, if you know, you can tell us, but um, that setting isn't really important, like the sensitivity, because I'm just going straight through, so it should be zero. Anyways, so if you look at this right now, so if I put the thing here, you can see it's showing a one, but what happens is when you push this button here, you can see it shorts out to zero. So basically these switches, um, they basically have like, uh, usually how it works is there's like a little circle thing of metal and then there's a ring around it. And when you push, it kind of pushes uh, both pieces together. I mean, um, essentially it's just closing the circuit. So basically you have a thing, you push the button and it touches it down like that. And that's how it knows that the, the key is pressed in place so when it's not pressed down then it's just permanently left open like this okay so let me show you what happens when we test one that's broken so we got the delete key down here right so we'll put this here you can see it's showing one now if I press the delete key all right it's hard to hold and show this but if I press this nothing's happening right you see nothing at all if I move it up to the one above it and then I press the key above it, you can see it responds. Okay? Right? You see that? It goes from zero, it goes from one to zero. So basically one is completely, uh, um, no circuits connected at all. But you can see that's working. All right. So those switches are broken. That's more rare um, because that means that the switches that they got are either were either dead from the factory or, I don't know, um, they somehow got it damaged when this thing was damaged. I don't know. Anyways, so that's one of the things. The other one, like I said, people put in the switch uh, wrong. So the way these things work, they have these two metal pins that stick out. When you push the switch in, it's supposed to go into these little um, slots. Basically, those things are shaped like this. When you push the pin in, it goes like this, and it opens the thing and makes it clamp on that. Okay, so there's two of them. What I've seen on, um, I've opened up so many of these, I've seen some where they'll put it in wrong, so instead of going into the slot, they'll put it here and it like bends this metal thing like that. So instead of like clamping like this, it ends up like, like this. And that's not good either, okay? And it doesn't clamp well and then it kind of falls out. And then the other thing I've seen is they push both of them in wrong like so bad so pretend there's like two of them but basically they push it like this and what it does instead of curling this it just pushes this thing completely out 
and basically this uh i don't know what they call this the hot switch or whatever this piece ends up ripping out so if you look at this this one is right now it's being held in with uh, jb weld epoxy it's not completely set yet because this is the one i had to repair um which uh that's just one thing but the bad part the part that makes it very difficult to fix this once this happens is you see these uh the silver part here that whole thing gets ripped up out of the board and the way this works let me see if i can show you here the way the circuits work uh if you look at like one of these okay so you see this silver piece here oh this one's kind of bent but okay you see this the silver piece here so what happens is this metal it has a little wire so it comes from this piece this silver piece has this uh reddish whatever uh lighter colored red wire it goes down here um they coat it with this stuff so it's insulated and then it goes down here and then it has a metal pad here but what happens when people rip it out by pushing from the other side and pushing this piece out it actually tears up this whole metal pad and then this insulation prevents the thing from making a good connection if, if you just stick it back down it's kind of like it tore like this and then you put it back down and it's like that so it's not actually like making a good connection all right so what I had to do over here, if you look at this one, I don't want to like poke it, but what I had to do was I had to scrape off this stuff here with like a small flathead screwdriver. So I had to scrape that off and then I had to use some flux and um, solder. I used a solder paste to melt it and make it stick into that very small little thin area um, exposed metal. And that's very difficult because it's it's hard to scrape off such a small area here and it's also difficult to get the solder to s stick to such a small area and then if you accidentally pull on it then you rip out more of this and then it ends up like breaking further and further up here you could technically connect a wire straight from here up to here it'll do the same thing you'll be fine um, but then this side oops sorry this side is the one that's difficult if you look at this I don't know if it's it's not really clear enough Okay, there you go. So if you look at that, this silver piece here, you see this little thin red piece? That's all you have that you can scrape up to solder here. And whoever worked on it before or when it tore out, this whole red piece was missing. Like everything from this point. Uh, let me see if I show it here. So everything from this point up was kind of torn off. And you only had like the very tip of this to work with so I had to scrape very carefully this tiny piece and then I had to s use some um, solder paste to solder a thin wire here and then jump it to here so that's very difficult it's really hard to even see but you see that little blob there and then it soldered up to there and then after that I just used that that dark grayish black looking stuff to glue it down so hopefully it doesn't get pushed back out so easily um, but yeah it's very common I've had one person where they let someone borrow their keyboard and whoever worked on it or whoever was messing with it swapped the stuff ripped out a whole bunch of these um, whatever these things hot swap whatever switch thingies okay so yeah you want to be very careful with that um, because if these break off um, you're going to have a very tough time soldering it back together. And I don't know how the other person damaged this, but it looked like they melted it or somehow tore it or something. So it was like eaten up here. And they said that the other person they brought this keyboard to held their keyboard hostage for like over a, uh, a year, which is crazy. Um, because I just did this, uh, I mean, it did take me a long time, like a few hours to try and get everything working. Um, but yeah, then I found out, um, I tested every single key individually, found out which ones were bad, and yeah, now it's working okay minus those keys. They do need to replace those switches. So they will have to pop these things back out, and then they will have to replace the switches underneath. Um, let me see if I can show you. I mean, if, if you're building these keyboards, you already kind of know what's underneath. So, oops, give me a second. I need to mute this. Okay. So if you've already been working on this keyboard, then you already know what it's supposed to be like. Why is my finger have the glue on it? I hope I didn't get the glue on stuff. Okay. 
Okay, I think we're okay. All right, but basically, um, these pieces, they just pop out, obviously, but you need the, the tool to do it. Like, if I try and pull it now, it's really difficult. You need the right, you need that little tool that grabs it and then slides the thing out. Um, and then, basically, underneath, you have that little switch with the colored little thingy in the middle. Um, I wish I could just pull this out to show you, but these things are... Okay, let me try. I, I need, oh, there we go. Okay, so basically this piece comes out, and this is the thing that's damaged. These are just little plastic covers um, to change whatever design on top. They have nothing electrical inside, um, but these are the ones that end up... So these can sometimes go bad, um, so I don't know how they broke the other ones, but on several of their keys, again, their Windows key here, their F4 key, and their Delete key here, those ones, these switches all went dead. They don't work anymore. Um, like when I push it, it doesn't respond. Okay, but this piece, it has the two little metal pokey pins that go through into here. And if you put them in crooked, like I said, it rips these things out. I've seen that happen on a lot of keyboards. Um, and this one, uh, I guess the other person, whoever worked on it, they just tried to like super glue it down or something. Um, they didn't even try and complete the circuit to make sure everything was okay. They just super glued this piece on there and the super glue didn't even really hold well. Like I, I just grabbed it like this and pulled it and it fell off. So yeah, there, these keyboards, I see it very often, these kinds of issues. Hopefully if you're experiencing these kinds of issues, you'll be able to fix yours. Um, if not, hopefully you can send it to somebody and send them this video and tell them this is what you need to do, how you need to fix it. Um, yeah, uh, but if you're sending it to someone that kind of knows how to fix this stuff, they should know how to do it. Um, I'm just glad that there was a tiny bit of that um, trace left that I could um, connect with a little wire there because if that was all completely ripped out, um, you have to probably get this board separated from the rest of it and then find out where that circuit's going. And I'm not too good at doing those. At least these circuits, I can see where they're going. But some boards, there'll be like several layers with uh, traces in the middle. And I can't really do anything about that. Anyways, that's it for now. Hopefully this video helped you guys. I'm just going to put this thing back together. And yeah, if it did, like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. I know this is an upgrade video, but yep. Anyways, and then if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. But uh, yeah, that's it. I'll see you all in the next one. All right, let's drop this bike.